Have you ever wondered why your 909 claps sound so much weaker than the claps you hear in professional productions? If that's you, you're in the right place because I'm going to show you the exact mixing framework I use to turn weak sounding 909 claps into really strong, impactful claps that actually cut through the mix. And I highly suggest you watch this video till the very end because I'm going to show you one of my favorite secret weapon hacks for adding some character to 909 claps and make them instantly better than anything you've done before. So as you can see in this session we have two different claps, clap weak and clap strong. Now the weak clap is where most producers get hung up on. It's just using a sample from the Ableton Core sample library. Let's listen to this. Now, to be honest with you, this isn't even a super bad clap. Now, our first big point of leverage is the actual sample we're using. I've made this clear already in my video about 909 kick drums, which you can watch here. But here with the claps, it's the same thing. I'm not a big fan of having a huge library and splice and loop club and whatever access to millions of samples. I just think you have to have a collection of really strong, well curated loops and samples. Now, once again, I can recommend the 909 from Mars. It's a really good sample pack if you want to get 909 sounds that actually sound good. Shout out to these guys again. If you want to have have a stronger clap and see what this sounds like, listen to this one here. Play in solo before. Both of these 909 clap samples are raw, clean, unprocessed signals. But already I can tell that the quality of the second sample is just much better than the first one. It somehow feels more dimensional, it feels richer in sound, it has a little bit better transient and it has also some body, some weight to it. And I think this is something that's missing in a lot of clap samples. Let's listen to this in context. Now let's say you don't have access to any external sample pack and you just work with the core library that comes with your DAW. Even then you can get much more out of your samples. I'm going to show you a really clever hack. So you go into your weak sample and you go to the filter slash global tab on the sampler. Now here you have the envelope of the sample and this is a super underused function in my opinion because there you can really shape the sample into something that it originally wasn't meant to be. Now let's say you want the sample to be snappier, to have less decay, like sharper attack time and like a little bit more impact overall. Let me show you how this is done. So it's very easy to manipulate the sample into something that you want it to be. It does not completely replace the need for other samples because always the source material dictates on where you can go overall with it. But I think this is an underused function in Ableton Live and pretty much any other DAW that has a sampler. Now it's time to create that super strong 909 clap that I've promised you in the beginning of this video. Before we get there, if you struggle with finishing songs consistently, I have a free guide that's going to help you with this. It's called the Finisher Framework. My three simple steps to help you finish at least one great sounding song per month. That is my promise to you. That is my wish for you. You can get it at pickyourself.com slash framework. It's entirely for free. I hope you get a lot of value out of it. Let's now move on to our strong clap. Let's use a little bit of EQ to make this clap cut through. So here's the Fab Filter Pro Q3, really solid EQ. You can also do this with the standard Ableton EQ, but I think this is better for actually showing what's going on. <laughs> You can already tell that the sample provider was really good at eliminating most of the low end here. You could theoretically still add a low cut of stuff that you don't want in here. Now here it gets important. If you overdo this cutting here, you're actually taking away from the substance of the clap. And this is one of the things that people don't understand about claps. I see so many producers cut their claps way too high. So it's all about finding the sweet spot of where is just unnecessary rumble that you don't want, but where is still a little bit of low end impact that you want to have in your clap. So for me, the sweet spot is around here.
Now, one EQ trick that I like a lot in processing claps is to push a little bit the upper bass slash lower mid-range section. So you grab a bell curve and you listen closely to where the fundamental tone of that clap is. So I personally like to push this a little bit. It gives the clap more power to cut through. Obviously it depends on what else you have in your mix. So if this is clashing with something else that is super essential in that area, I would rather sacrifice the clap, of course. But now in this production, actually sounds quite good. So the level is almost identical because if we cut something here, it gives us enough potential to also boost something else. If you want to do meticulous gain staging in here, I have a gain staging video that you can check out over here. Now, what are other areas in collapse that we might want to listen for? So a really cool area to look at is the high mid range. There is one area in particular where the human ear is most sensitive, which is the two kilohertz to four or six kilohertz range. This is because human speech has evolved in this way. Our hearing has evolved in this way that the consonants while we're talking, they are located in that area. So it draws our attention to this. It makes it easier for us to understand what someone else is saying. So our ears have developed to be super sensitive by evolution to this frequency. Let's see what we can get out of this. It will bring the clap closer to us. I particularly like this area. I'll just give this a gentle boost here, not too much. And obviously you can bring the overall output down a bit. Now, if you want your claps to be a little bit more open and also bring in more of the room sound and the ambience that is already in the recording, you can open up the top end here a tiny bit. I'm actually using bell curves. It's to me a little bit smoother sounding, broad bell curves compared to just high shelves. This is completely up to taste. Let me show you what this sounds like. Now to me this introduces a little bit of, I would call it cold digitalness in this specific clap, so I will not do this. I would maybe just give it a very, very, very tiny narrow boost somewhere around here. It's really important to not only listen in solo but also in context. If you want your clap to be a little bit brighter, you can boost this more. If you want it to be really dark, you obviously would even cut the top end. So there is no right or wrong here. This is just taste on how you manipulate this. Next up, let's add some compression. So here's the Ableton standard compressor. What mode do you want to use? Well, in this case, I'm going to use peak mode, which means that it will react more to the peak level, not so much to the RMS level. And also we'll do it in wet dry. I'm going to do it in completely wet, first of all, and then bring the dial down. By the way, I've made a video about parallel processing, the three different ways you can do it in Ableton Live, you can watch it here. So I'm a big fan of explaining the why behind things, not only the what and the how. Why do you want to dial in a specific setting on this compressor? The question is, what do we want to achieve? To me, this clap could use a tiny bit more snap, yeah, a little bit more of that transient sound. And typically, if you dial in a compressor to achieve that, you would go for something like this. You would increase the attack time, which means the time until the compressor fully kicks in to make sure that the transient can come through. The release time relatively slow, so the compressor goes back to its standard level as quickly as possible. And the ratio, I mean, if you do it in parallel, we can be a bit more extreme with the ratio. If we are staying in 100% wet now, I would go for something more gentle. So let's keep it a bit gentle for now. Then you lower the threshold until you see some action here and you also hear the results.
and then you see 3 dB are being deducted. That means you can use some makeup gain to 3 dB, something like that. Okay, nice. So this is a good standard setting here, but now we can go a bit more extreme because we will use this with a bit of dry signal and a little bit of wet signal. Let's go extreme and say we use something like 10 to 1, 11 to 1. Now this is pretty extreme. Let's dial in the wet dry setting accordingly. And now you can play with the attack setting once again and say, okay, if it's in parallel, I have so much of the original transient already from the dry path. Once again, watch my parallel processing video to understand what I'm talking about. This allows you to dial in attack times that are a bit shorter and give more body to the sound. So let's play around with this. We can use a bit more makeup gain now because we're deducting even more. You can see it on the levels here. A bit too much. So I like it, this adds a little bit more body to the sound. Really happy with the compression, let's now move on. As promised, I will now show you the exact method I use to infuse a little bit more edge and character into the sound. This is one of my favorite ways to do this. Before we get there, if you got any value out of this video so far, then consider subscribing to the channel, consider liking this video. It will help you because the YouTube algorithm is going to suggest better videos to you and who doesn't want that? And it also helps me, of course, so super selfishly, it helps me produce more and better content for you. Now, let's be honest, sometimes you just want a bit more character, a bit more edge to your 909 sounds, and we can infuse this to this clean 909 clap sample with the following techniques. First of all, let's use a little bit of saturation. So Ableton Saturator is an awesome tool. I like this analog clip mode a lot because it's not too distorted. So sometimes the medium or hard curve are just too extreme. Analog clip just gives a little bit of that nice edge to it without destroying the sound. So I hope you can notice how it immediately gets a little bit denser, a little bit richer. If this is not enough, then go for the medium curve, for example. So same settings, but medium curve. I like the subtle saturation of the analog clip mode. And if that is not enough, let me show you one of my absolute secret weapon hacks for 909 claps. So watch this. Step one is to create a new channel and slap a sample on it. Now we're going to duplicate the pattern that we have here. So it's just playing the same thing. So I just called this clap parallel and made sure that this is more or less the same color. So we identify it together. The sample that we're going to throw in here is something very different. So let's say you want to keep some of the 909 character, but at the same time enhance it in a way where it is spread out a little bit into the stereo field, has maybe even more distortion and crush to it and more body. Then you can go to a different part of your sample library and pick for example a snare drum that is already more processed, a little bit distorted and maybe spread out. It's a very different sample of course. Now together with our clap. Way too loud and we have to treat this a little bit. We give it a bit more snap and take away some of the release so it's just a bit more snappy and doesn't ring out completely. And we bring it down and feed it in. And now you have to use a little bit of EQ after that to make sure that you glue it in a way that makes sense with the clap originally. So let's grab our FabFilter Pro Q3 
and use a high cut. What I'm doing now is I'm looking for a sweet spot where I get some of the character of this new sample that blends in nicely with the original clap sound. You can also use a low cut if there's too much rumble down here. It's not necessarily the case here, but I just want to have a very specific band of sound here. I think this sounds nice. So in context. I think this new sample opens just a new dimension. It's just a matter of taste whether you want it to be more classic or a little bit more upfront, a little bit more modern. The second approach, I would definitely use another sample and layer it underneath. I think this makes a ton of sense. Let me know in the comments below what you found valuable in this video. What did you get out of it? And if you have any follow-up questions whatsoever, put them in the comments and I will see you in the next video.